Hi, I'm Evan Ehrenberg, and I'm a graduate student here at MIT in the Brain and Cognitive Sciences Department. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the brain through a series of short videos. What better model to use for a brain than a real one? Hi, so this is a partially dissected human brain taken from someone who donated their brain to science. To get started, I just want to take a moment to point out the biggest landmarks on the brain so that we have something to refer to later on. At the most basic level, the brain is divided into four lobes, and these are the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe here in the back. In general, the frontal lobe performs cognitive tasks and controls voluntary movement. The temporal lobe handles memory, hearing, and language. The parietal lobe enables body and touch sensation and generates an understanding of where your body is in space and the occipital lobe here in the back handles vision. There's also this complicated bulge down here. It's not a lobe, it's a brainstem. This sends information out of the brain to control muscles, heart rate, and breathing. It's very important for initiating sleep and many other functions. Just behind the brainstem is the cerebellum, another very complicated bulge. Cerebellum means little brain in Latin, and that's just what it is. There are actually more neurons in the cerebellum alone than there are in the entire rest of the brain. They're just smaller and packed in really, really, really tightly. I'll talk more about these brain areas in the following videos, but I do want to cover some basic terminology first, which I'll use to refer to regions of the brain later on. These words are standard in neuroscience literature, and I'll remind you what they mean later on, but do your best to memorize them now. So first, let's look at the types of cross-sections you can have. There are three types of cross-sections or cuts that you can make, one for each dimension. Sagittal, coronal, and horizontal. A sagittal cross-section cuts across the brain lengthwise, like this. You can think of it like cutting a hot dog bun. A coronal slice cuts it like a loaf of bread, so along this line. And finally, a horizontal slice, unsurprisingly, cuts along the horizon of the brain. Horizontal slices are also referred to as axial slices, so just keep that in mind, you might hear either way. So again, we have sagittal, coronal, and horizontal or axial slices. So what would we call this cut right here? That would be a sagittal cut, right? Because we're cutting lengthwise across the brain. Uh, and this cut here, this is a big one, what's that? That's a horizontal or an axial cross section. Next, I want to go over words which refer to what you could think of as the axes of the brain. So imagine you have three axes, an x-axis, a z-axis, and a y-axis going from the nose to the back. These axes go through the brain, and you might want to say where a point is along each axis. You know, it can be very useful. So let's start with the z-axis, so up and down movement. We say that something is dorsal if it is near the top of the brain or above something else. Therefore, if I were to say dorsal temporal lobe, I would be referring to the top of the temporal lobe, so somewhere around here. You can remember that dorsal means the top of the brain by thinking of a dorsal fin on a dolphin. In a dolphin, its head points up with respect to its back, so the top of its brain is on the same side as its dorsal fin. The opposite of dorsal is ventral, and it refers to the bottom of the brain, or to be below something else. So. Using our example with the temporal lobe, the ventral surface of the temporal lobe would be, like, right here, on the bottom. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but there are multiple words for up, down, forwards, and back. Superior and inferior serve the same purpose as dorsal and ventral. Superior refers to up, and inferior to down. Alright, so we've got the z-axis pegged down. Let's go for the x-axis next, left and right. We refer to the left and right sides of the brain simply as left and right. Sometimes we will refer to an area being ipsilateral or contralateral with respect to another area. This just means it's on the same or opposite hemisphere of the brain as the other area that we're referring to. So ipsilateral means the same side, the same hemisphere, and contralateral means it's on the opposite side. So if I were to mention a structure here and say that something else is ipsilateral to it, we'll find that structure on the same hemisphere of the brain. And if we said it was contralateral, we'd find it on the opposite side of the brain. Now, if we want to refer to something that is bilateral, something that is found on both sides of the brain, we want to use something besides right and left. So for this purpose, we have medial and lateral. And so 
Medial refers to something towards the center of the brain, and lateral refers to something on the sides of the brain. So more medial or more lateral means something that's further towards the center or edge, respectively. And that's it for the x-axis. Let's finally move on to the y-axis. Like dorsal and superior, we're going to encounter multiple words with the same meaning here, so just bear with me. Rostral refers to the front of the brain. It literally refers to being towards the nose. And I like to think of it as R for rats. And what do rats have? They have big pointy noses, so towards the nose. The opposite of rostral is caudal, referring to the back of the brain. Caudal literally means towards the tail. We also have the more commonly used anterior and posterior, referring to the front and the back of the brain, respectively. And that's it. Those are the primary words used to describe areas of the brain. What's great is that you can string them all together to refer to a specific area of the brain. Let's try that out now. So if I were to mention the dorsolateral frontal lobe, where would I be talking about? So something like right here, right? Because it's the top, remember dorsal means top, and sides, the lateral part of the frontal lobe. And what if I said medial rostral temporal lobe? Sorry, this is uh, this hasn't falling off. Like I said, this is a dissected brain, but it is neat. You can see the corona radiata. Now this has fallen off. It's these are radiating axons right here, coming out of the corpus callosum. But we'll we'll get to that in another video. So just bear with me. So what I say, medial rostral temporal lobe. So to see that, we're gonna have to flip the brain over, which because it's been dissected is is no easy task. But uh, yeah, so here we are, bottom of the brain. So, okay, medial rostral temporal lobe. So we've got the temporal lobe, it's right here, and we're going medial, so the inside, inner part, towards the center of the brain, and then rostral, towards the nose. So we're talking about something right here. Uh, and, you know, that's pretty, that's very specific, just these few words. you got the medial rostral temporal lobe, it's right here, this, uh, this area of the brain. So pretty cool, you can do that with just these so few words. And, and that's it. I mean, if you can remember all of these terms, then you're good to go. All you have to do is learn a bunch of brain structures. And I mean, you can start reading like neuroscience journals and fMRI studies and all this other really cool stuff just with these words under your belt.